Hello there Aries, welcome to your March 2018 tarot reading. So I just want to start out this reading by wishing you all a very happy birthday for those of you who are celebrating your birthday time the uh, end of March, okay? So I wish you all the best, take care of yourself, uh, don't get too crazy, and uh, especially, you know, with the drinking and driving, okay? Um, just make sure you have a designated driver. So I'm not going to lecture too much. Uh, we have a lot to get through. So I have four messages that are coming through. I'm going to relay them first and then we'll break them down, unpack these ideas just a little bit, okay? So the first message coming in from March 2018 here is they mention material things. And I feel like what this means is, you know, like the physical things, the cars, the house, the dogs, the property, all of these things that make you you. The second message here is it says settling down, pros and cons. And it says wanting to start out over with work. So settling down, but then wanting to start over with work. So you're kind of thinking about settling down or starting over with work and you're weighing out the pros and cons. The third thing here is they're asking you, are you feeling a little bit scared of change? Because I feel like um, you're content right now and you want more out of life, of course, but then it's the material things that are bogging you down just a little bit. So they're saying here, are you willing to let go of these material things and start over? Begin anew, start a new adventure. And as adventurous as you say you are, this is kind of like the, the, uh, the test phase, okay? Are you really going to, you know, take up the opportunities and just prove to yourself that you're adventurous and you're still willing to embrace new opportunities? Or are you so bogged down with these material things? The fourth and final message that um, I have here is for those of you in relationships um, that, you know, have not really that... I guess like I'm seeing patterns in relationships for you guys and what they're saying here is you're not sure what you want. You're not able to attract exactly what you want mainly because you don't know what you're looking for. Okay. So basically what this means is a little bit of introspection is necessary for this month, but I don't see the energy being contained just for this month. I feel like it's a very, very big year for you to understand and figure out what is it that you're looking for? What is it that you want? What it is that you need to know about yourself, your needs, your desire, in order for you to figure out what you want. So it's a soul searching journey. And I feel the energy is going to be very prominent around the June time frame. And I feel like from the June time frame until possibly June of next year, uh, that's when, you know, you, you have the opportunity here to kind of dig a little bit deeper and go inwards and try to figure out who am I and, you know, what is it that I'm really looking for? Because you're kind of grabbing things and just, you know, uh, what other people want, you kind of kind of delude yourself into thinking, okay, well, that person has that and their life seems, you know, splendid and stable and they seem very successful and they seem pretty happy with their relationship partner. So maybe that's what I want too, you know, so like you're emulating somebody else or you're looking at what other people have and you're just like, okay, maybe that's what I want too. But I feel like the process for you guys is very subconscious. It's sort of like, you see this ideal image and you're like, I want that. And, you know, you, you work towards that. And then when you get there, that's when, you know, it, it's sort of like, it's not really internally and emotionally what you have uh, arrived at. It's just something that you kind of glean and picked up and thought you wanted. So that soul searching journey is going to be in store for you. So <clears throat> let me just unpack some of these messages. Okay. So the first one, material things, the cars, the house, the dogs, the white picket fence, the corner office. And right now, what it denotes to me is that many of you are financially very stable. You're where you need to be. And I feel like you have a lot of career and professional success. Okay. So I'm seeing people in quarter offices, sipping their coffee, sipping their tea, looking out the window and, you know, looking at the people uh, on the ground floor, 
uh, outside the building. So you're just like, I've made it. I'm very established. I've been with uh, the company, the organization for quite some time. I have a lot of respect. I have seniority. I have, you know, first dibs when it comes to vacation days. I have first dibs when it comes to changing to a new office. So you're sitting pretty. You're in a really good space right now. And so a lot of the times, too, when we are kind of like at the peak of our career, we kind of think about, you know, what's next? I'm already maxed out. And I feel like, you know, Virgos in particular hit this period last year. If you have Virgo and friends around you, you might want to talk to them about this and just ask them like, hey, you know, did you did that happen to you last year? What did you do? How do you know where to go? How do you know when to change direction? They're very good at that because when they feel like I'm not learning anymore, I'm not being challenged anymore, they want something new. And I feel like for you guys, it's time for something new, but you're secure where you are. It took a lot of work, you know, and you, you took great pride in all your accomplishments. So where you're at right now, you feel like you can finally exhale and you feel like that sense of contentment and you want to stay and stay and stay. And you know, when we stay in a hot bath, the temperature will eventually, you know, get cooler. And then we're, we find ourselves all of a sudden, you know, trapped in a, a, a cold bath. So that's what it's starting to feel like to me. And I feel like you're at this point where you're comfortable, you're accomplished, you have seniority. And it's important for you to start thinking about the next step. Okay, it's important for you to stay ahead of the game. And I know that where you are right now, people look up to you. It's very flattering. People look up to you. People respect you. People want to be like you, but I also feel like you would be shortchanging yourself if you don't allow yourself to shift to a new position, a new situation where you can grow, where you can learn, where you can even have more responsibilities. So maybe, you know, shifting into a managerial position, shifting into supervisory position, doing a lot more training, but either way, I feel like you need to grow more. It's safe and stable and definitely very nice where you are at, but I feel like there's still a lot more climbing that can be had, okay? Um, the question here that you want to ask yourself is, so what's next? What are we look working towards? What is my next step? What do I want to happen for me for the next five years? So think to yourself, do I want to stay here for the next five years, for the next 10 years? Am I going to be happy? Is everything just, you know, going to be the same? Do uh, Am I going to be content? So you want to start thinking rather than, you know, one, two, three year plans. You want to start thinking longer term, five, 10 years, okay? The second message here. I hear settling down children and then wanting to start out with a new path when it comes to your work. Many of you have opportunities to travel and relocate for a new, a very big prestigious, you know, gig. Okay. So this is like traveling in order to relocate and finding like a, an ideal job. And the transition is going to be amazing. Okay. It's going to be very phenomenally good for you for the family. And even if you're making this move on your own, I feel that it's a, it's the right move. I'm seeing a lot of people like heading in the Eastern direction and Northeastern direction as well. So he West heading East. And I'm also feeling as well. It's this process settling down, wanting love, wanting to have children, wanting to have a family, because right now, you're kind of like, you know, at the top of that mountain, you feel really good, you feel very financially secure. And for some of you, it's not so much about what's next professionally, but more about what's next emotionally. I'm ready right now. I'm settled. I don't want to climb anymore. I want somebody to share this beautiful view with. I want a lover, I want family, and I want to settle down and have that sense of uh, family. But then you're also wondering, if I were to, you know, relocate, is that going to interfere with this family 
situation. So there is that um, that that push and pull factor. I feel coming in for many of you. So you want to really think about you know what it is that you're looking for, because I feel like it's like floating around you. You're kind of looking at other people and their lifestyle and emulating what you see rather than, you know, really asking yourself, am I wanting that because of what I see somebody's ver version of it or vision of it? Or do I need to create my own? So I feel like that's really important for you to have that sense of authenticity of that sense of individuality in the things that you're creating otherwise you're just you know creating a replica and you're not going to be happy you know with a, a copycat version of somebody else's dream somebody else's life so it's really important to authentically ask yourself you know to to like have your own sense of authenticity in the things that you do and the life that you're trying to create uh, third thing coming in here, are you a little scared of change? So Aries, this is not something that I would expect to see for you ever. And this is not something that I feel, you know, you ever want to admit to other people. Okay. Um, however, around, you know, our solar return or birthday time, we tend to have this moment where we kind of take stock. Okay. Okay. So then we, uh, we kind of like have this internal dialogue with ourselves. Okay, how old am I? How old am I turning? Am I turning 34? Okay, so I'm 34 right now. Uh, where am I in relations to all my friends? Are they as accomplished as me? Do they have families? And I feel that you, you guys do this internal dialogue. You go through it. And what it does is that you're once again, um, th this sense of, you know, having a, a, a timeline. At this age, I have to do this. At this age, I have to get a house. At this age, I have to get a boyfriend. At this age, I need to get married. At this age, I need to have kids. So it's just, you know, this keeping up with the rat race, okay? And then also um, having these expectations for yourself about, you know, when things need to be achieved, when things need to be done. Um, the past 10 years, I feel for many of you, things get sidetracked and you feel almost as if I can't have it all. It's almost like love would be going great and then career would be kind of like at a lull, okay? Like I hate my boss, I hate my co-workers, but then love is great. And then for the others of you, it's the opposite where it's like love was just kicking your butt and then career was really taking off. Friendships were thriving. Social life was vibrant, but then the love situation uh, left you feeling almost like it, it just corroded your self-esteem and so right now I feel many of you are at a point where you can have both you definitely can plan for both and both of these great things are coming in for you in love and career as well and so when they both come at once and they're both so stable and splendid it's almost like you can't really believe it. You, you, you feel like, you know, I, I can't close my eyes. Otherwise, I'm going to wake up and realize it's all been a dream. So you're at a point right now where things are really good and you want to just, you know, you, you want things to be status quo. And you fear any type of movement, any type of change is going to snap you back to reality and kind of like pull this idyllic situation away from you so it's like you're fearing change and you fear that change will disrupt whatever is real in front of you and the point that we need to remind ourselves is if it's real it's going to be there no matter what right if it's an illusion then it's never real to begin with so i feel like you kind of need to gently remind yourself if it's real if it's meant for me it's gonna be there no matter what and I feel many of you have dealt with you know this big 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 relationship that kept coming back that kept coming back and you're just like oh it keeps coming back it's meant for me and then because it wasn't meant for you it wasn't like you know what's meant for you it was a mistake and now you're kind of doubting your reality now you're kind of doubting 
but how will I know? Because that last thing kept coming back, but it wasn't right for me. How will I know? How can I make that distinct that that um how can I distinguish what's really for me versus what keeps coming in to test me? And so you're having a lot of, you know, uh, self-doubt. You're also doubting your reality. You're doubting as well what you know and what you can trust, okay? Um, my advice for you guys when dealing with this is if you're chasing it, it's not meant for you, okay? And let's just admit to ourselves there was a relationship and you tell yourself, oh, he or she kept coming back in. They kept reeling me in. But honestly, I felt like you chased it. And so whatever you're chasing, if you had to chase it, it's not right for you. It's heading, it's trying to go the other way. And you're kind of like superimposing yourself in front of it because you're chasing it. You want it back. You want to retain it. You want to uh, own it and you want to possess it. And that's a major indicator that something's not meant for you, someone's not meant for you, or a situation's not meant for you. So let's not kid ourselves about that, okay? Be very, very real with our intentions, okay? So, um, the, I guess to sum up that third message, are you feeling a little bit scared of change? I feel that you are, Aries, and I feel a lot of it has to do with the fact that Something happened in the past and you you can't trust it anymore. And the right thing for you to do right now is, you know, let it come to you. Don't chase it, okay? You're a very proactive sign. You're very resourceful. You're also very impatient. You want things to happen faster, quicker, more intense, more, you know, magnitude, more excitement. And so you tend to chase after things and that's not the way things work. We can't really push and expect to get a good outcome, okay? So just be patient a little bit and let it come to you, okay? So the final message here is, um, first of all, they mention as well, you're not sure what you want. You're not able to attract what you want because that process about knowing ourselves, figuring out what we need and being very, very honest with ourselves when we have these internal monologues. We need to have that self-honesty in order for us to really know ourselves and in order for us to, once we know ourselves, to be able to attract things that, not only things that we want, but things that are actually very good for us and that can help us grow as a person, okay? You're well, you know, as humans, we always have things that we want, but are they good for us? Probably not all of them are going to be good for us. So the, the right thing to do is trying to distinguish, you know, um, what are actually good, f like what things out there is actually good for me, and then what's really going to help me grow. So I feel like that's what you're going to need to, at the end of the day, ask yourself. And then you're going to also need to learn to be patient and also understand that not everything that you want, not everything that you possess or you, you know, you crave and you want to cling on to is going to be good for you. So distinguishing between what you want and what's really good for you is going to be really important. And as I'm saying this, I'm hearing you guys, I'm hearing you guys say, but I want it, so it has to be good for me, you know, and, and the things that you want is so like the desire is so strong because, you know, when you see something that you like, you beeline for it, right? Like you, you make like this full focus, all of your energy, your entire being, and you go after that thing. So it's like an arrow. That's what it feels like to me. Like you're so focused and fixated on it, on that desire, on that sense of like, I want that. I want to possess it. I want to own it. I want to grab it. And you kind of don't think about, is it good for me? Okay. So it could be a person. It could be a thing. It could be whatever it is. That's not really good for you that you kind of go after no matter what. So let's really think about, you know, um, in the spirit of growth, how is this thing, this object, this person, this desire going to help me grow? 
How is it going to make me a better person? And then operating from that space where you're learning to kind of like control that desire and then telling yourself maybe another day, you know, maybe in like a different time, maybe when I'm, I'm in a different place in my life. And um, as I say that, I'm seeing that many of you are like, you know, thinking about parenthood, motherhood, fatherhood, and you're just like, I really want that. But maybe the timing is not right. So you want to just, you know, calm down a little bit and, and tell yourself, maybe later, maybe at a different time, maybe when we're both a little bit more stable, or maybe when my partner is sure, or maybe when I'm sure. Okay. And then I'm also seeing as well, for others of you, this sense of like, I see you looking at pictures, you know, social media pictures. Uh, of other people with this uh, fairy tale, you know, family ideal life. So some of them are like world travelers where they're going to different cities and everything looks very exotic and they take these stunning pictures and you're just like, I want to have that life. And then you look at the pictures and, and what you fail to see is that, first of all, the pictures are contrived, but I, I know that you're smart enough to know that. Um, the pictures are contrived, okay? But then also the people in the picture, it's a picture of them in a new landscape and they feel kind of lonely, right? They feel kind of lonesome and it, the, the picture just feel, feels very staged. And so you're, you're looking at things on the surface, but then the next time you see it, you have to ask yourself, you know, are, are they really happy there? It feels a little bit lonely and it feels a little bit empty. So is that really the life that you want? And then for others, looking at people who have, you know, family portraits, like um, they have dogs, children, and the love of their life, their husbands, their wives, their significant other, whatever it is. And it's like this idyllic picture. And uh, what you also fail to see is the work necessary, the compromise, the labor pains, the, you know, late nights staying up with a sick child and all the, the arguments and the, the disputes between a significant other. All of these things are normal human experiences and in order for us to create you know like a, a beautiful family it just doesn't happen overnight we just don't fall madly in love and you know have children and, and and live happily ever after it requires a lot of work it requires a lot of sacrifice and it requires a lot of letting our ego to the side so that we can really understand what our partner wants Okay, and I feel like you're not really seeing that either. Um, one last thing, message that I want to leave you guys with here is um, I feel like so. This is um, it's a little bit difficult for me to unpack, so let me try to do this. First of all, I see many of you telling yourself, Once I have that uh, perfect partner. Once he or she shows up in my life, I'm going to quit my ways. I'm going to quit going out. I'm going to quit, you know, staying out late, drinking, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to become a little bit more domesticated, a lot more reliable. I'm going to do everything by the book once that perfect person appears in front of me. And then you're looking for somebody that is very similar to you exciting, fun, you know, life of a party, and just as dynamic as you because you don't like you're very other oriented too but you also need a lot of stimulation from your environment and then when you meet that same person that is exactly like you i feel like this sense of possessiveness wants you to make wants you to have them be a little bit more domesticated so you want them to stay home you want them to exclusively to yourself you want to spend more time with them you want them kind of like contained within the confines of the relationship. But because they're so, you know, be, you like them because they're independent, because they're strong mentally, because they don't take things lying down, because they're not a doormat, because they're just, you know, as individualistic as you are. So they don't like to operate under the rules and the confines that you give them. So I feel like that's what's happening here. You're attracting exactly the types of people that you want but because they're so much like you, 
that it's really hard for you know two people who are so fiercely independent and who will you know adamantly advocate for their independence to really be together and to really compromise with each other and to really feel like staying home and watching movies you know all day every day is enough so I feel like that's what's really happening here and so you have to try to figure out you know it's not so much what you want in a relationship partner but finding somebody who's right for you who will give you that in emotional nurturing okay you need stimulation from your environment or you want stimulation from your environment but what you really need is for the environment you know to be a little bit more nurturing caring so you need to surround yourself with people who are a little bit more emotionally available who are a lot more caring nurturing and I want to say considerate as well and won't rebel so much when you know when you want to be with them so that basically means you want them to be emotionally available when you need them I'm seeing people who are dating air signs so Aquarius Gemini and Libra I'm also seeing people as well um, going through the dating environment and you have a few options like you're still dating lightly and you're still trying to figure each other out which is good and I feel like this can be the one for you um, it's the beginning of something good and it can go really well okay um, I'm feeling as well if you have children there is a little bit of um, it, they're they're saying here the pressure is on you your partner's going through some difficulties emotional difficulties the pressure is on you to kind of like pick up the slack so it's time for you to step up and you know take care of things while your partner handles his or her little emotional slump okay career is going really really well new opportunities and especially um, relocating for work and things like that it's going to be very good for you um, finances you know try to curb your spending a little bit I feel like a little bit of excessive energy for that has been happening actually for the past three months so you want to curb your spending you want to save up a little bit you want to stay put okay and um, do a little bit more financially uh, financial planning okay um, one last message actually that came in that just came into the picture here um, there, I know this sounds really weird but it's uh, coming out so I'm just gonna have to say it uh, they're saying here really figure out you know what you don't know so if you're having conversation with somebody and they're shouting like all of these things and I feel a lot of it has to do with current events actually so if they're saying like how do you feel about you know what happened in Russia what happened in North Korea and, and things like that and you're just like I don't know what happened well it's really important to brush up so that you can have these conversation starters okay and I feel like it's important to kind of like see the world in a more I want to say like to to be more of a global citizen I feel like that's going to be the next stage or the next evolution for you guys especially for those who have already who are at the peak of their career okay so the next stage is to be more of a worldly citizen or a global citizen to be a, a little bit more um, socially aware of what's happening around the world and to be able to have opportunities to travel a little bit more further and wider all around the world okay so that's coming in and I feel like that's the next stage of your evolution um, I do wish you all the best Aries um, take care of yourself I feel like this month is gonna be very very dynamic I don't see a lot of busy energy but I feel like you know it's um it's centered greatly around love and around career and achievements you're gonna be quite happy okay take care of yourself and I'll talk to you soon bye bye